So here comes my favorite part of the show. It's time to make dessert. What we're going to make today is taok gyosu. Taok gyosu literally means chicken breast, but it's really more like a milk pudding. So what we're going to need is just four cups of milk, a stick and a half of butter, six ounces of flour, and one cup of granulated sugar. That's it. So what we can do now is just get our milk uh, heated up. We'll put it on high first and then we'll lower it so it doesn't come to a boil too quickly. And I'll just add my sugar to that milk. If you want, give it a nice stir so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Now always when you're making this, you always have to use whole milk. It gives it a much more creamy texture and a, that much more of a better flavor. So just give it a little mix and wait for it to come to a boil. Now it doesn't have to come to a quick bubbling boil. You just have to wait for it to froth up top and maybe do a little belly dance on top. That's what we call it in my house. So now we can get this big pot ready. And now we're going to take our six ounces of flour and kind of just saute it back and forth. So now I'm getting the aroma of the flour. It's really cooking up nicely. And now's a good time to add in our butter. Now we can lower our heat because it's going to sizzle up when we throw it in there. You can already hear it sizzling. And you just want to keep mixing it up. Mixing it up, it's going to become like a mushy, uh, brown, sugary texture. You can even turn it off at this point because all the heat from the pot is going to melt that butter. So once you see that the milk is nice and hot, again, you don't need it to come to a rolling boil. Just a little bit of bubble on top. You see the smoke coming up. You can turn that off. And now we're going to slowly add it to our flour mixture. Now just a little bit at a time. You add a little and then you mix it together until it becomes smooth and then you add a little more. You don't want to add it all at once because then it'll become really lumpy and it'll be hard to mix. So now just add the finishing touches, the rest of your milk. Now there's a lot of stirring involved. So you women at home that have daughters, get them up off the couch, come help you. Because you're going to have to keep standing by it and stirring and stirring and stirring. And it's good, it gives them good practice, right? So once this has been cooking for five minutes and those flavors have been blending together nicely, now it's time to run it through the blender. So I have my blender right here. And you can do it spoon by spoon if you don't feel comfortable. Uh, or I like to do it just from the pot. Just do it really slowly and you can see there's very minimal lumps in there. The blender is going to get that all out. And you want to blend this for two minutes straight. Now the more you run it through the blender, the more creamy and more gummy it's going to get. And this is going to thicken up when you chill it anyway. So you want to have your Pyrex ready. You're just going to pour it in. You see how creamy it is? It's like pure heaven. That's what it is. It even tastes like pure heaven. Mmm, so good. So what you want to do now is just get a piece of saran wrap. And we're going to have to cover it. Now this is a little tricky when you're covering it. So if you girls have help at home, tell them to come over and help you. Now it's not your typical wrapping where you just wrap it on top. You have to kind of let the inside fall in right on top of the mixture. Now see how it's like not completely straight? If you're at home and you have a lot of bumps, don't lift it up. Just, just leave it. If you lift it up, you're just going to ruin it. It's okay if it has a few lines and a few creases. Now you have to let this chill for at least six hours. It's going to get really thick and creamy and delicious. So you see how I'm wrapping the inside? Just use your fingers. And that's how it's wrapped. And then you want to put it in the fridge and let it chill for six hours, which I've made one from the morning already so that I could show you 
what thickness it's supposed to be and the consistency. And a great way to garnish this is with some fresh cinnamon or uh, ground up pistachios. That's always how you'll find it in a typical Turkish restaurant. You just want to lift off. You see it comes off quite easy and clean. There's nothing on the saran wrap. And then you could just take a few of your pistachios, and drizzle it on top. And then as you cut the pieces and serve them, you can always add more. I love cinnamon on it. So now we could just get ready to serve our delicious milk pudding. So I have a plate right here. What I like to do is just drizzle a little bit of crushed pistachios on the plate. It gives it a great flavor and texture. Just cut up a little piece and try it and see how it came out. That's going to be very thick so you can cut it with a knife. So there you go. You just get one piece. And you got to be careful when you're putting it on the plate because sometimes it may break but don't worry. So this is our famous tol gosu. It's delicious and it's going to go great with the rest of our meal. So here we are at the end of another delicious meal. We've made the karniyarik or split belly, the domatesli bulgur or bulgur with tomato sauce, the yogurt with watercress, and a delicious tauk gyosu. And this is just a great example of home-style Turkish cooking. So until next time, enjoy your meal! Well, that's it for our show. I'm Janine Aloisi, and I'll see you at the same time next week. Until then, invite a friend over for a meal and try out some of our recipes. I'm sure you'll be a hit.